And one of the things I wanted to also make mention in terms of growth, and I talked about the um, dealing with or uh, managing uh, the challenges in, ch in change uh, is uh, time with the capital T. Um, because yeah, are we asking ourselves the right questions? How do I want to spend the rest of my life? And particularly when when people look at time, and I see a lot of times in people in business, they either look at past or future. They look at all right, I work till I work late today. What do I have to do tomorrow? What do I have to meet? but they don't necessarily look at time in terms of uh, being versus doing, uh, not getting caught up in uh, just the doing part. But, and I often like to say what you do is not who you are. And so you have to value time so that you can appreciate time. If you can appreciate time and look at time as, an, as a valued asset, then you will uh, look at your business entirely different. You, you realize that it's your lifespan. And, um, and I say, what time do we have? Because when I say we, it's a family business. The reason why, because everything that I represent in my business impacts my family. So it doesn't matter if your family works in your business or not. As Holly mentioned, that, you know, partnering with your, your life's partner to, to, to get support in the business. Well, even though they may have another uh, occupation, it's still a family business. So we ought to view it as such. So when it comes to time, um, and that's a lot of uh, what I hear in particular, not only the entrepreneurs, but people who have other uh, financial advisors in their practice, it's always about time. Um, well, a lot of times what I find, what I find out they're working, they're, they're, well, I'll get to the next slide. I think that covers a lot of what I'm about to say. And we'll come to that. It's about strategic time, strategic work versus tactical work. And those those are very different, and we need to approach them as such. Uh, let's move on. Oh, one of the things I wanted to look at, one of the uh, uh, teachable points is about procrastination and, and how important it is to make sure that uh, you, you manage the risk and, and particularly uh, managing uh, the gaps, and particularly when it comes to growth. Uh, and a lot of times when I'm trying to share with people that uh, procrastination, you find that a lot of times with uh, people in the entertainment industry or um, athletes because of managing their finances and you find the story uh, later on in their lives, how you see headlines, uh, X person went broke or X person uh, had a financial uh, downfall. Well, I think a big part of that is procrastination. I think in particular with entrepreneurs, uh, some of the part of it is, uh, are we really doing the work that's going to move the business forward? And uh, one of the reasons why I have Martin Luther King here is particularly is because a, a lesson I always like to share in, or again, a teachable moment when it comes to procrastination. Uh, most of uh, uh, people don't know that Martin Luther King's secretary actually kept a lot of his personal handwritten notes. Um, years after he died. And, and it wasn't until I think it's the early 2000s where his family actually had to bring litigation to obtain those notes. But in the meantime, they didn't look at the value. If you look at um, content that we, we and one of the things, not only just in a business, but I think a lot of times we're content creators as well. And if you're not necessarily being cognizant of uh, of, of all that is, is going on and, and, and it's available. And you think about all the years, I mean, he, he passed away in the six, 1968 um, and it wasn't until 2000, they were able to, to bring, it, bring the, uh, the, the issue to court where they're able to win a judgment. But, but in between that time, uh, his secretary was able to leverage his handwritten notes as a business opportunity. So again, uh, I think procrastination in doing the, 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 the strategic work will always hinder uh, entrepreneurs. So I think in terms of that, uh, it usually kind of have, have, has a way of um, showing itself in the process. A lot of times in growth, you'll find out where you're deficient, not necessarily saying that we have to spend an enormous amount of time in our weaknesses and not necessarily focus on our strengths, but we just don't have, we cannot ignore the weakness uh, while we're focusing on our strength. It's an opportunity to, if we may need to uh, allocate some resources to uh, help in that particular area, uh, so be it, and, 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 but we can also uh, brainstorm. I know for myself, when I started off, uh, the biggest challenge for myself was uh, office space. And so what I did was I did partner with 
Uh, I had a couple opportunities. I was a part of uh, Kensington Wheaton Chamber of Commerce, and the president actually um, asked, uh, you know, network to see if uh, someone could share office space at a reduced cost, uh, and I was able to do so. Um, I was able to uh, work with the current person that brought me into the business at an underpinning in taxes, so I could support her client base with uh, tax planning. Uh, which allowed me to get a reduction in office space. So there's several ways you can approach it, but when you're looking at uh, some of the efficiencies that you may have, um, but it shouldn't be a point where we do not address it. And then we wait for the opportunity in terms where we build up enough revenue where we can afford to uh, move in a particular area. I think we're just uh, uh, holding ourselves back and they're not actually uh, achieving that true vision that we have for ourselves.